This episode is brought to you by Riverview Boat Store in Bellevue, Iowa. Food you love and supplies you need. Look them up at riverviewboatstore.com. Welcome back to Between the Levees. I'm joined today by Corey Cafaro. I met this guy on Facebook somewhere along the line a few months ago. Came to find out we got a few mutual connections, and uh, we finally got to get this done. Corey, thank you for joining me today. Oh, no problem. It's a pleasure. Well, first things first, my friend, where were you born? Uh, Riverside, California, actually. What brought your family out there? Uh, That's where all my family's from. That's where I was born. Uh, The way I ended up in Mississippi was my mom met my stepdad. Um, He used to drive trucks, 18-wheelers, cross-country. That's how they met And whenever I was five. She decided to marry, and he moved us out here to Mississippi with him. So that's how I ended up in Mississippi. Well, what did your uh, your mom and dad do for a living? Uh, my dad, my real dad in California, owns uh, his own painting business. So I grew up painting um, when I was with him, and then uh, my stepdad he went from driving trucks to. Uh, pipe fitting in a lot of the plants around Baton Rouge and uh, moved on to a safety inspector in the plants. And my mom's always worked uh, as a pharmacy technician. Any memories from the first five years in, in California? Man, no, not, not the first five uh, faint memories, but really, really not much of nothing. I moved back out there when I was uh, 12 until uh, I was 16. And I I have a lot of memories from that that part, but. Share something interesting from, from those four years you, you moved back out there. Man, honestly, if I had to say, I know everybody hates on California and you couldn't pay me as an adult nowadays to move back there. But uh, in that age era, like from 12 to 16, I loved it. There's so much to do versus here in small town, Mississippi. But, uh, yeah, as surfing, skating, all extreme sports, uh, kind of miss it from time to time. But I mean, in that, in that era, I'd say it, it was fun. It was a blast. Well, and how about life in Mississippi? Mississippi's great. I love it. I love the outdoors. Uh, always looking for hunting season to roll around. Uh, actually, just had to turn down opening day of a dove season because I got a call from a Wood Resources needing a trip pilot. So I told him I'd uh, come help him out. But Mississippi, shoot, I, I love it. Like I said, you couldn't pay me back as pay me enough money to move back to California now as an adult especially with everything going on in the world. Well, what about growing up in Mississippi? Did you split your time between there and Baton Rouge? Uh, No. I mean, I grew up in Gloucester, Mississippi, a small town. We pretty much stayed with the friends right around a couple, you know, cities right next to each other. Didn't really venture out a whole lot. I mean, maybe in my teen years. You know, we did I ventured out to Baton Rouge and stuff, but I mean, ever since, honestly, whenever I got on started on the boats and uh, was told about the boats, I didn't even know what a new boat looked like. And uh, somebody that I was renting from actually knew some people, and their son did it, and they were kind of telling me about it when times had got rough for me. And uh, at that time, I was trying to get on offshore on like a rig. But uh, back then it was so booming, you know, people, spots didn't come available very often, you know. So that's when I heard about the boats and was interested and got out there and got the opportunity and kind of ran with it. Been out there for going on 17 years now. And was that right out of high school or was there any college in the cars for you? No, I didn't go to college. Um but it wasn't right out of high school. I think I, that I was like 20. I was 20 whenever I started uh, on the boat. 
and because I yeah because I spent my twenty first birthday on the boat. So yeah, it wasn't right after I did um I did flooring uh, for a flooring company before I went out on the boats, but times got you know tough back then and stuff slowed down. So it was pretty much one or two days worth of work and that was all we were picking up so it wasn't enough to pay the bills and times got like i said times got rough on me and stuff and that's when the people i were were my landlords they're the ones son that uh worked uh sons worked out there and they were telling me about it so i kind of took took it and ran with it it was actually uh people might know him his name's uh george marvel uh, the boat right there at the uh, ACL at Tiger Fleet is named after him. He's the he's the guy. Him and his wife's the one were my landlords. They were the ones that uh kind of introduced me to the waterways. I've been at the sticks on that boat. I spent a good bit of time out there on. At, at Tiger Fleet. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Well, George Marvel is he's the one kind of introduced me and told me about the boats. Tell me about your entrance into the industry. Oh, uh, let's see. I, me and a buddy of mine, uh, after I heard about it from them, we uh, drove down to Baton Rouge, Port Allen. My first company was uh, uh, Deloach. And we rode down there to get do the whole hire home process thing and everything. And back then I was kind of slim and slender. So I think they had uh, Z-Dave actually pulled me in his office. I'll never forget it. Kind of chatted with me. You could tell my buddy, he pretty much had it in the bag, but they were looking at me like, oh man, I don't know if he's going to be cut out for the job. Because I, like I said, I was, shoot, I was a toothpick. And uh, he gave me a shot and shoot, I, I hadn't looked back since. Uh, I worked at Deloach for them. Worked with a lot of great people uh, while I was there. Worked for them about a year and a half until my first daughter uh, was about to be born. That's what made me made me decide to make a move, <clears throat> and I hired on at Carline and Companies, uh, another great company um, down in Geismer, and started working on the Richmond uh, for Geismer 183. So that's basically how I got started on the boats. Well, tell me about that first time getting on a boat with the loach. Man, it was uh, it was different. It's it's a uh, getting used to, I guess. You know, the whole being gone never have really been gone like that. Um, and back then, I was working uh, two for one. You know, twenty eight fourteen. Um, but it 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 wasn't bad. I. I always been type of into the water you know boating and i like being on the water anything that has to do with water i like so I, i've kind of i don't know it kind of just fell fell in there with me uh, always been one to kind of strive to be the best at anything i do so like learning it was was it was fun to me you know seeing all this other stuff you know different ways to build toe catch lines and everything uh, making bumpers, splicing eyes, you know, it's just a, kind of a skill set that I was, didn't know nothing about and was kind of, you know, just, it was interesting. So it, it kind of, kind of just rolled into, into my lap. I love it. I tell people nowadays there ain't, there's not another thing I'd, you know, rather do than be out on the boats. I mean, you do have to sacrifice being gone from home, but Pretty much every time you're off for your days off, it's it's a vacation. You're back home with the family and nothing but family time. What boat did you start out on? Oh, let's see. Uh, when my first hitch at the Loach, they put me on the Miss Molly D, and it was actually on dry dock down in New Orleans, and I spent my first two weeks on dry dock. Me and another guy. Uh, guy named brian wilson good guy uh we were just pretty much babysitting the boat you know making sure nothing none of the shipyard guys walked off with nothing and 
yeah, spent my first two weeks on Miss Molly D on dry dock. They were being overhauled, and then uh, they pulled me off of there so I could get some experience uh, on my first hitch and put me on the Alyssa. And at that time, the Alyssa was running pretty much Baton Rouge to Lower New Orleans, back and forth, everywhere in between. So I definitely got some uh, some uh, stopping and dropping experience. Who were the captains and pilots you were working with? Oh, let's see. Miss Molly D, the captain would have been, uh, oh, man, if you wouldn't have asked, I could have t- – Ben Moffitt. He had been on there for years, real, real skilled uh, wheelman. You know, he's older. He's been out there for a long time, but knew knew his stuff. He was the captain at the time on the Miss Molly D. But like I said, I didn't, I didn't get to work with him because we were in a shipyard. But a few hitches down the line, they put me back on the Miss Molly D, and I got to work with him, him and everybody else, the crew of that boat, and uh, Steve. Captain Steve was on the list, and I, I can't remember his name. Man. Like I said, man, that's been seventeen years ago. Was that Stephen Harrison? Long hair. You know, I've never met him. Ain't actually, had, I can't. I, I like I said, I'd be lying if I said I can't think of his last name. Uh, but I remember it was Captain Steve. Was this Captain Alyssa? back then and he had long hair he's another good one to work with i mean everybody i can't say there's not been many maybe a handful of people since i've been out there that you know you might not see eye to eye but for the most part i it's it's been good good to me good to my family i mean it does us good I, like i said i love i love being on the boat well, start walking me through the rest of your career. So you land at Carline. Uh, where were we all running at the yeah. time? Yeah. At first, uh, my first, I would say, year and a half, uh, I was actually working on the Richmond at Carline Geisner Fleet right there at 183. And uh, after I hired on there, I went working in the fleet so I could be home for my firstborn, you know, while she was being born and everything. And, uh, after that, no, it wasn't even a year and a half. It was like nine months, and and uh, Carline paid for me to go to school to get my steersman license and sent me to school. I got done with school and went back for a, you know a couple more months on the Richmond in the fleet, and then realized like no, I'm not going to be able to get a whole lot of stick time steering time uh being on a fleet so that's when i decided to go back on the live on boat and uh started um oh the css atlanta landed over there and uh captain chip uh chip persick a good dude he uh kind of took me took me in and we just got along great and he just kind of showed me the way you know and kind of just anytime I wanted to steer or anything, he 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 would, he would let me. You know, I guess he could see that I was. It goes a long way when you show somebody that you're hungry, you know, and want it versus just sitting back and wanting it handed to you. So I mean, I guess he's seen that, and I I got a lot of my steering time between Baton Rouge, New Orleans, on that boat. A lot of it just turning loose from the fleet running up a barge up to, you know, Cosmo or Allied and spotting it on the dock, pulling one off the dock, going back down to the fleet and fleeting it. But he would basically, I would go out there, turn the barge loose, go back, drop my vest on the fleet deck, go up to the wheelhouse. He'd have it knuckled in, call holding it in the fleet, you know, and he'd move out the way and I'd back it out of the fleet and take it up there and get to the dock landed on the dock and same thing go back downstairs i mean it was you had to put in work but it depends on how bad you want it you know that to me that wasn't a whole lot of work i was getting where i wanted to be so i was i'm thankful for him for real because he he kind of 
let me get it as much as I wanted to. Tell me about the first time at the sticks. First time at the sticks. Uh, that wouldn't have been my first time. I did have captains let me hold it, you know, driving down the canal uh, with a six pack or a couple of them uh, when I was at the loach still and uh pretty pretty nerve-wracking to do it for your first time uh especially going like i said when i first hired on didn't even know what a tow boat was you know i'm sitting here uh which way do i gotta push the stick to make it go you know to the starboard to the port clueless and uh so it was definitely nerve-wracking uh, i've had a couple guys that i've worked with over the years and trained after i got my de and uh I tell them all the same thing, man. I remember being there. It, it's it's nerve wracking, you, you know. It's something new, but the the more you do it, it's just gonna become. It's gonna come to you, you know. I remember my knees shaking, my palms getting sweaty from you know gripping the stick tight because you're nervous. But it all, I don't know. It all goes away. I love driving the boat. Love love new challenges and you know learning it's it you're always going to learn driving a boat because you got mother nature and everything's going to be different every every other time but I, I i i love it where are all you posted now oh let's see i am posted all the way to brownsville west uh been over there everywhere in between pretty much corpus uh, up, uh, oh, she have been up to Colorado, um, New Orleans, uh, up to St. Paul. Um, I've made the loop, you know, going across the sounds up to Mobile, uh, Tim Tom, back down. Uh, the Cumberland and Ohio and back down to the Mississippi. And that's, that's pretty much as far east as I've been is the, uh, I haven't been no, no further past Mobile Ship Channel, Pascagoula. Uh, I would say the highest I've been on the Ohio is right there where the Cumberland spills into the uh, Ohio making the loop. I haven't been no further north, north than there. But that's pretty much my uh, where all I'm posted at. What's your favorite favorite place to run? Oh, I was talking to somebody about this not long ago on that subject. You know, I hear a lot of people like, "Oh, I, you know, I don't want to go to Corpus. I hate going to Corpus and da da." I can honestly say. I don't mind going anywhere that I've been. I like going somewhere I haven't been because it's, I don't know, the more places you, you go, the, you know, more you got on your resume. So there's not a place that I prefer one over the other. Uh, going up to St. Paul, that's new to me. I just hired on full time with Kirby and, uh, they decided to put me on a boat running up there, asked me if I would. I, you know, I'm not going to turn, turn nothing down you know like i said i like learning new new areas and whatnot so i've been up there a hand uh probably times now and uh it's different it's different the way they do stuff you know you got to plank into the locks and stuff southbound and but uh like i said it's a learning experience i loved it there's not a place i'd if I said more comfortable because I've just done it a lot more, it would be between New Orleans, Baton Rouge to to Corpus and Brownsville and everywhere that direction, east, you know, up and west. Uh, that's just where I've spent most of my time. But, I mean, it's I, – I can't say I like one more than the other, honestly. What's the prettiest place you've ever been? Oh, that one, I, up until I started going up north, I'd have to say that was the uh, prettiest. It, it's pretty up north. How about the nastiest place uh, you've been? Nastiest place. Oh, man. I would have to say 
up in Houston, Ship Channel gets pretty nasty when you talk. If you're talking about the trash in the water and whatnot, but uh, yeah, I would say Houston Ship Channel is probably if you're talking trash, that would be the that'd be the the nastiest place. What's one of the craziest things you've seen out there? Maybe even happened to you. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Let's see. Craziest thing. I mean, I've seen a bunch of crazy videos, of course, over the uh, internet. But if you want one happen to me, my first, okay, I'll go with the, might not be the craziest thing, but it's a story. Uh, and it happened to me. It was my first time breaking up two, coming across Corpus ship uh, out of Corpus out of Corpus Christi uh we ended up uh getting two regulations that needed to be hot shot back to Houston and uh usually I was on a boat at the time the the gunner actually uh was an LMO boat and uh we usually kept 230s so I got you know comfortable with 230s and whatnot and just doing it back and forth well, we got orders to just grab two loaded regulations and shoot hot shot to Houston. So I kind of got complacent. was like, oh, yeah, we got some great, you know, two regulations. This ain't going to be nothing. And got kind of pumped about it and didn't look at the weather before I started out into uh, Corpus <laughs> Ship Channel, and uh, which the weather wasn't that bad. It was the tide. The tide was flooding in really bad. So whenever uh, I left out, we got out there, got uh, past the breaking water, and I started feeling how bad the tide was. I was pretty much having to steer up to the greens, outbound steering up to the greens, probably 20, 22 degree angle to stay, keep the load, uh, you know, keep picked up. And uh, I was like, man, this isn't good, but it was quiet. It was quiet the whole time I was out. And I would say probably right there at the dog leg by uh, La, Quina, La Quina Channel, uh, La Quinta, where it dog legs and the land cut starts back, uh, I started getting uh, ship traffic. Had an inbound ship coming and an outbound ship. I almost made it back to the land cut to where it would start breaking the tide off of me. And uh, we, uh, that inbound ship, he was, he was moving, he was rolling. So I was already fighting the tide, set me to the reds. He's coming inbound and hauling butt. So of course he's, he's going to be sucking us straight to him even more. And, uh, whenever he come by us, uh, say the boat, <laughs> I was pointed up all I could to the greens without hitting them. And uh, when he came by, the boat got, he, he was steadily sucking us to him. The boat probably, I would say, got what felt like to be 40 foot off of him. And the uh, only thing I knew to do at the time to keep the boat off of the ship was once he got right about the stern of the ship, got about where the coupling was, I just let the head swing back toward towards uh, the ship to kick the stern off of him. So that's what I did, but I guess with the the tide rolling, you know, flooding in, plus him going by whenever the wakes met, it picked that lead barge up, broke the coupling. We had just, like two days before this, we just got our winch, uh, winch break worked on, and when it got under pressure, it gave the brake gave so the boat wasn't secure we're bouncing and beating back and forth the there was only like one wire left that hadn't broke out at the coupling so it got pretty uh pretty intense and that was my first first go with the uh, breaking toe out in the bay and it was it was pretty intense and then in all that i had an outbound ship coming too and he's telling me, "Hey, Cap, you uh, you're gonna be able to keep it picked up on the greens, and uh, I'm coming." Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty hectic. It was nerve wracking, but 
I mean, that's where, I don't know, people, some people aren't made for it, and they'll just freeze up. That's the worst thing to do is freeze up. I uh, ended up sounding the general alarm, getting the other women <clears throat> up there. We had a couple guys that were fairly new on deck at the time. So instead of them being out there and losing a finger or something, I got the uh, other wheelmen to hold the sticks after the outbound ship got by us. And I went out there and helped the guys, you know, secure back to toe. And we had to throw out a 35 and a, a set to, you know, get the, because the winch wire gave. And we ended up, everything was good. We ended up getting situated and out of there, out to Lydia and Channel Fleet to where we could get back put together good. But yeah, that was my first one. I wouldn't say the craziest thing I've seen out there, but that one, that was my first go at it. And it was pretty, pretty intense. Anything else you'd like to touch on from your career or maybe what the industry's meant to you? I, like I said, I, I love it. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of positivity. I mean, people could make make a good living out of it. I feel uh, I feel like it's you know in a sense it's a dying uh, industry because it doesn't get uh, how am I trying to word this? It doesn't get out to enough people, you know. Um, like I said before, I knew first hired on before I, I didn't even know what a towboat was. Um, you know, the family used to back years ago, you know, your families could come visit the boat and stuff like that. And, and being a father with sons, I mean, you, you, they would see it, you know, and kind of get show off, shown off more and. Uh, which my uh, Kenny Kenny Brown, he's doing the Maritime Throwdown now, and uh, I couldn't tell you how many times me and Kenny's been on the phone together and talked for hours about it, and I think that's a real positive. You know, it's bringing shedding light to our industry, and and uh, teaching people the skill set. You know, so so that's a good positive positive for the industry. Um. I, but in a whole, I mean, I, I love it. I, I couldn't do, I don't, I wouldn't want to do anything else other than being on the, on the, on the river. Well, where'd you meet Kenny and have you competed? Uh, uh, let's see. No, I have not competed yet. Uh, due to, I got five kids. So when I'm home, I'm, I'm pretty busy. Me and Kenny actually live right now. If I was to hit the road and, Take her right out of my driveway. I'd be at Kenny's driveway in about 30 seconds. I met Kenny when I was working at Carline years ago. And we've just, we hit it off and have stayed, you know, buddies ever since. Uh, good guy. Uh, did, you know, he he had to want to. He, he loves it out on the water, on the boat, you know, and took it and ran with it. And, uh. I haven't got to compete yet. Like I said, it's busy when I'm, I am home. And, uh, but fun fact, uh, the first ever video, I was the one in it throwing the, uh, life ring and, uh, the single part, uh, long, how far you could throw the uh, single part. In the first ever video when he first started the Maritime Throwdown, he's doing it right here in Macomb, Mississippi, up at the old train depot. Thought that was pretty cool. Uh, do want to get go to an event and see it in person, you know, because he's doing it all the time now. And uh, I think it'd be a fun thing to see. Well, Corey, I thank you for fitting me in today, man. I know you have to, you got called out to another job, I think, for tomorrow. So I'm glad we can get this done. Oh, no problem. And I think your I appreciate episode... appreciate you for having me on. Absolutely, man. I think you're episode 90, so I'm going to keep trying to spread the word here. All right, and I'll help spread, spread it for you. Thanks a lot, brother. All right, no problem. Talk to you soon. This has been a production of Where You At Studios, LLC.